My presentation will be about inequality of opportunity. So in global comparisons, the MENA region or the data uh, that we have on the region, the official statistics, official survey, show that inequality is relatively low compared to um, other regions. Um, and as we have heard in other sessions, in other parallel sessions earlier today, social contract in the MENA region and the guaranteed job in the public sector has helped reach those findings. Yet inequality is perceived as a major factor in all the uprisings that happened in many of the Arab countries in the beginning in, in 2010-2011. And the World Bank has called that the Arab inequality puzzle. So how the data is showing us relatively low levels of inequality while this has led to revolutions in many countries. So it's important to mention um, the data uh, uh, issue there in, in the region and that the, the, the official statistics are not capturing a very important part of the population. Those are the top deciles uh, and their expenditure. And maybe if that is taken into account um, inequality would have been much, uh, much higher. And some studies and reports by the ESQA have actually showed that uh, inequality in that case, if top incomes are taken into consideration, would be rising. Um, so we do have literature on inequality in the Middle East and North Africa that has showed. Um, so some of it is about the frustration of youth in employment, um, other studies about income inequality uh, as outcome inequality. Um, till recently, little was known about inequality of opportunity in the region. Uh, so few studied, uh, studies um, started doing that in the beginning of the 2000s, um, just focusing on inequality of opportunity in health and education. But recently, um, several studies uh, have been done on the topic. And, okay, I really like that one because, you know, usually that's the question that also students ask whether we should focus on inequality of outcomes or opportunity. And actually, both are important as one is causing the other. But the academic literature, and I think after the uh, keynote lecture of this morning, uh, inequality of opportunity is becoming really important for policy, um, for policy makers as well. So inequality of opportunity in the literature. Um, um, so I'll skip that. This is just defining what we mean by opportunity and the definition of circumstances. And I think we had long discussions about that during the day. Um, okay, so. This is the literature uh, we have on inequality of opportunity. We have one interesting study, and um, to my best knowledge, this is the only study that has focused on income, inequality of opportunity in income, by um, Kraft, Assad, Romer, and Saleh Isfahani that shows that actually in, in a number of Arab countries, namely Tunisia, Egypt, and Jordan, inequality of opportunity in income is relatively moderate. When it comes to child health, um, it was shown in other studies that circumstances explain a major part of inequality when it comes to child health. And then we, re we have a, a relatively larger literature on the region on inequality of opportunity in education. Um, this presentation is actually not showing um, findings of one single research piece, but a number um, uh, of studies that I've worked on. Uh, one of them is, a, is an ESQA report that came out in 2019, and another study that I've recently worked on, and um, uh, a study actually that where we looked at inequality of opportunity in um, in educational attainment in different Arab countries. 
Um, okay, so let me start by showing you some descriptives on access. So since we'll be talking a lot about circumstances in the next couple of minutes. So these are about access to safe drinking water and improved sanitation by um, place of um, residence, so area, whether it's urban or rural, in a number of um, MENA countries. So uh, you can see that for um, a number of countries um, that access has actually, or for almost all countries, that, has, uh, that access has improved over time. However, the gap is clear between those living in rural and those living in urban countries. And in a country like Palestine, that gap has even um, uh, been aggra aggravated, has widened actually over time. So when we compare 2006 and 2014, you can see that gap getting bigger. And similar results when it comes to sanitation. Um, now we're doing the same exercise, but this time looking at differences uh, based on the level of education of the head of the household. So we're, the, we're comparing two extreme households, one with um, no education and the other one with 12 years or uh, more years of education. And again, you can see that, you know, uh, the region is, is doing relatively well right, when it comes to access to those basic services, um, even for households for which the head is, has no education, right, so, which is confirming actually what Vladimir was showing in his presentation that in terms of, you know, outcomes, a lot of improvement was observed. Now, when it comes to wealth, it's more problematic. Um, you can see the large gaps between richest and the poorest households in some countries like Palestine, Yemen, uh, but also Iraq and Mauritius. You can see that this gap is really huge. In other countries uh, like Libya, Egypt, Tunisia, Jordan, they're doing slightly better. But in general, um, you know, the, the upper middle class starting from the middle rich and richest household, they are doing pretty well in general. Um, the poorest in some countries still can access those basic services, but in some countries they don't. So now that leads us actually to look and have a quick look at inequality of um, health opportunity. So this is looking at uh, stunting by education of the health of the household. And you can see that the probability of stunting is, is pretty low um, in most countries, uh, except Sudan and Yemen, that have high probabilities. And also the gap is, is negligible in most countries. Um, but when we look at it by, by wealth quintile, similar results, um, so Sudan and Yemen is, not, is, is, um, is doing worse than the other countries when it comes to, uh, to stunting. But in general, you know, the other MENA countries are doing pretty well. Now, what we're doing here, we, uh, we are looking at the Shapley decomposition, again, for stunting, to see which circumstances matter most when it comes to stunting. And um, as you can see, the, the darker, uh, the dark blue uh, part of the bars are, are the biggest, actually, which is wealth. So it seems that wealth really matters, which was confirmed earlier uh, with those descriptives. And then next we see the orange uh, parts in some countries, um, which is the education of the health of the of the household of head. Sorry, that is uh, that also matters a lot. Um, um, here in Libya, you can see wealth actually explaining more than 70% of, uh, of stunting, which is pretty high. 
Um, same with infant, infant mortality, that's the other health outcome we're looking at here. And again, Shapley decomposition showing, is showing us that wealth uh, matters and the education of the head of the household area matters in, in some parts. So you can see in Jordan, but, but this effect is, is actually going down over time. So here in Jordan, that was the case in 2002. But as you can see, the improvements um, in 2012. Um, so in summary, analysis of inequality of opportunity in health indicates higher incidences of increasing inequality compared to inequality of outcomes. Now I'll move quickly. I have just a couple of minutes for um, inequality of opportunity in education. Um, that's uh, one graph actually that where we plotted um, or we regressed the average years of education um, over GDP per capita. And as you can see that most MENA countries um, are below the fitted line, which means that uh, the years of education is, is relatively low compared to income, and especially in GCC countries like Kuwait, for example. Um, but now, if we focus on, okay, so that one, it was about different levels of education, starting from ever attending school to completing primary, completing secondary, etc. Um, okay, so, so that's the similarity index, so it is showing that inequality of opportunity is really low, actually, when it comes to ever attending school, to entering school, but it increased with increasing levels of education. So you can see that the highest is for secondary education, which will be confirmed later when we look at um, Shapley decomposition. Okay, um, so this one um, is for attending school. And again, it's the, the same as the ones I was showing earlier for health. Uh, so this is showing that, again, um, gender is not representing, is not explaining a large part of inequality of opportunity for attending school. But uh, the, head, the education of the head of the household does, right? So the orange part of the bars see in Libya really, really matters, followed by household wealth. So again, that confirms what we saw earlier in the descriptives. Education of the parents, or of the head of the household, and household wealth explain, explain most of um, inequality of opportunity when it comes to education. And this is confirmed also for inequality of opportunity for primary, completing primary education, and for secondary education. Um, this is a recent uh, study. It's actually the, the only advantage of showing you these is that we have more recent data for Jordan. This was only about Jordan. And it's basically, I'm, I'm keeping those here just to show you that over time, even in the, using the latest data for Jordan, same findings were, fine, were found that um, the education of the head of the household and household wealth are the, the variables that matter most. So, um, in summary, inequality of opportunity in education in MENA remains high, especially at higher levels of education, namely secondary level and above. Despite progress in inclusive access, household wealth and the education of the head of the household continue to be the primary determinant of inequality of opportunity. So I just want to conclude by saying that the MENA region has achieved significant human capital gains. This is what we saw earlier. Um, leading to decreasing um, outcomes inequality, but that wasn't, wasn't really translated into decreasing inequality of opportunity as well. What we need, um, so here we're suggesting, and that was also um, from the report, the ASQA report of 2019 about inequality in the MENA, in the MENA region, that good governance would actually help um, uh, by designing policy that effectively targets the most disadvantaged groups. Um, 
and I'll stop here. Thank you very much.